Hey guys, if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you're probably looking at a problem similar to this. You're being asked to graph an equation that has absolute value bars, right? Okay, good news is if you've been uh, graphing parabolas, this is going to feel very familiar, but don't worry if you haven't been graphing parabolas, we're still going to go over it, okay? So always when we're being asked to graph something, you can always plug in a number for X and get Y and get a point, right? But that way can be very time consuming. It's just not always the best way, right? Good news is when we are graphing an equation with absolute value bars, we have what we like to call a parent graph, okay? If you were just being asked to graph y equals the absolute value of x, this is what your graph would look like, okay? But you're like, internet math lady, that's not what I'm being asked to graph. I'm being asked to graph something like this, right? There might be something being added or subtracted inside the bars, added or subtracted on the back. There might even be a number out front here, right? So what do we do then? Well, the cool thing about this is the graph for this is going to look very similar to this graph. It's just going to be moved around a little bit, okay? So let's see how we determine what happens to it, okay? So looking at this, if you have a number out front, in this case we don't, or it's technically a one, um, we don't have anything out front. If you want to see an example where we do have one out front, I will link a video for in the corner. But that number, if that number is positive, my graph is going to open up, right? When we graph absolute value, it's a V shape. So if it's positive, it's going to open up. If it's negative, it's going to open down, okay? Like an upside down V. Also, if you have a number out front there, if it's a fraction, it is going to compress your graph. Hold with me if you're like, she's saying a lot of words. Hang with me, okay? It's going to compress your graph. If you have a number out there like two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's going to stretch your graph, okay? And I'm gonna show you really fast what that looks like, okay? Because even if you're not doing problems like this yet, you probably will be. Okay, so that blue graph you see, that V, is the parent graph I just showed you, okay? The green you can see has a four out front, and you see how it's still a V, but it's a lot, it's stretched out, right? And same with the red, we have a fraction out front, one fourth. It's still, it's not looking as much like a V, but it's still technically a V, right? But it's compressed, right? It's a lot flatter, okay? So... That's in your future if you're not doing those quite yet, just kind of a visual for you, okay? That is what the number out front, how that affects our graph, okay? If you have a number being added or subtracted inside the bars, that tells you how far your graph shifts to the right or left, okay? So talking about our vertex, that is this point, okay, where they meet, where it turns, that's called your vertex. The... H and K tell you where that vertex shifts to, okay? The H, or this number inside of here, tells you right or left, and you actually go opposite of the sign. So when you see plus two, you might think to the right two, but when it's inside there, we actually do opposite. So the graph is going to be shifted to the left two, okay? And then that guy being added or subtracted on the back tells you how far the graph is being shifted up or down. And with this one, you stick with the sign. So since it's minus four, we are going to shift our graph down four. Okay. All right. So let's look at this now. My parent graph starts at zero, zero. Okay. But I just figured out that this graph is going to be shifted to the left two and down one, two, three, four. Okay. So that is my new vertex, okay? It's gonna open up as a V. Now here will kind of depend on your teacher. So some teachers at this point probably just wanna know that you know where the vertex goes and that it opens up, okay? So maybe you're done if that's all your teacher wants. If your teacher wants to have some more points, that's what we're gonna do right now, okay? So. With this one, I know it's going to open up, so I kind of want to know where it's going to cross that x-axis, okay? So that is when y equals 0. So we're going to plug in y equals 0 and see what we get, okay? So right here, we're going to do 0 equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 4, okay? 
Now, guys, this is one of my favorite things about math, okay? When we think about this, we know it's going to be a V, so it's going to cross my x-axis twice, right? So I should get two answers out of this one problem. Let's see what happens, okay? So my goal is to x alone, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I end up with 4 equals the absolute value of x plus 2, okay? Now, if you need an absolute value review, I'll link a video for you in the corner, okay? So what absolute value is asking for is it's asking for a distance, okay? It's asking how far is this value in here from 0, okay? So if you have the absolute value of negative 5, the answer is 5 because you can't have a negative distance. Or if you have the absolute value of 5, your answer is 5, okay? So with that information in mind, okay, this x plus 2 could be equal to 4 or x plus 2 could be equal to negative 4, okay? Because the absolute value of 4 is 4 and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, okay? So what do I do here? I split these off and I say negative 4 could equal that x plus 2 and a positive 4 could equal that x plus 2, okay? Look how I'm getting two answers. Isn't this cool? Okay, so now I'm just trying to get these x's alone. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get negative 6 equals x, okay? And then over here, and I get 4 minus 2, 2 equals x, okay? So when I plugged in 0 for y, let's do our ordered pairs here. I got negative 6 when I plugged in 0 for y, so there's one ordered pair. I also got 2 when I plugged in 0 for y. Okay, if you're like, I don't get that absolute value thing she just did, go ahead and click that video I linked earlier, okay? But here, we're going to graph these points. So I've got 2, 0, so over 2, up and down, none. So I've got a point right there. And then I've got negative 6, 0, okay? So see that? We got two answers, okay? Now we're going to make our V. It looks a little something like this. Okay, there's our graph. I hope this made sense. We started out with our equation here. We looked at our parent graph and figured out how this one was going to differ from it. So see how it's pretty much the same graph? It's just moved over and down. Okay. All right. So hopefully this made sense. If you need some more absolute value videos, I will link a playlist for you. Thanks. Bye.